you know, how are we to really uh, distinguish uh, the the sheep and the and the wolves? You know, those who come in sheep's clothing, those who can look kind of flashy and attractive on the outside, but on the inside, you know, can be ravenous wolves. You know, the the good fruit and the bad fruit from the different trees. And uh, you know, I think in particular, I was thinking about you know some of the the kind of stuff that's happened in church history here in in recent times, the last few years. You know, we could think about kind of the scandals with some higher ranking figures in the church, you know, those who on the outside looked very attractive and, and very good, you know, those who had a, a quote unquote good reputation. And, uh, you know, and then we can think of somebody like Padre Pio, you know, a true saint of the church who was, was slandered in his own lifetime, a man who was unjustly kind of condemned to a sort of solitude within his monastery. He couldn't celebrate mass publicly or or preach publicly or hear confessions because of unjust and untrue accusations against him. You know, so those who on the outside looked really attractive and really, uh, really, yeah, just really attractive in the eyes of the church and, and publicly, and then somebody like Padre Pio, you know, who was falsely accused of things and, and from the outside looked pretty terrible, but in reality was a great saint. You know, how are we to really distinguish these these good fruits and these bad fruits from these good trees and bad trees. Um, you know, I, I would say we see that image of the tree really all throughout sacred history. You know, we see in Genesis, Adam and Eve, the fruit of the tree in the garden that God tells them explicitly not to eat, you know, to distinguish good from evil, but the fruits of that act of disobedience, you know, the fruits of that sin. Um, you know, we could look at especially the tree of the cross, you know, how that act of disobedience was undone by Christ, the new Adam. You know, Christ who the fruits of the cross, you know, are, are righteousness and, and justice and, and, and grace. How Christ, through the fruit of the cross, brings us back, or the fruit of the cross, rather, is that right relationship with God. You know, so for us to, to be able to bear good fruit, to become a good tree, you know, means to be grafted on and to, to stay on to that tree of the cross, you know, to unite our whole lives, our whole beings, the sacrifice of our life, you know, through the tree of the cross, you know, by uniting ourselves and letting Christ live out the mystery of his passion, death, and resurrection within us, you know, interiorly, uh, from that, the fruit of which is, is good life, you know, is, is good life. Uh, so we pray for that grace that in every moment of our lives that we can remain grafted on to Christ, you know, by being faithful to his church, the teaching of his church, by being faithful to the sacraments of the church, especially confession and the Eucharist, by staying close to Our Lady who always is at the foot of the tree of the cross. We could always find her there. You know, that by staying close in that way, by staying grafted on to Christ in that way, that we too, by the grace of God, can bear good fruit.